This is A1 Auto House, a massive 1,000 square meter workshop for high performance European cars owned by my mate Adam. I guess I should give you a little bit of context here. A1 Auto House is moving from a location that is about six times smaller than this and they're scaling up. We filmed all of this as renovations and the fit out was being done at the new premises. This gave us time to plan and tweak the entire deployment. What you're seeing is the new premises before its completion. And he's tasked me with building out the network infrastructure for this absolutely freaking massive premises. Now, the thing with doing something like this is there are quite a few challenges. First of all, because this is such a big space and because there's remote tuning to be done in cars here, Wi-Fi needs to cover this whole area. I'm, I'm telling you guys, it is absolutely massive. So what we'll be doing in this series of videos is showing you where we're putting the wireless access points around here, how we're doing the entire wired network for the whole office setup. And all of this is thanks to Leader Systems and Ubiquity. They've helped us out with a whole bunch of gear to get this absolutely immense task done. It's so big that there's a gantry crane and yes, this is my beautiful European ride. Because there's so much gear, we also need to build out a little server room and an entire server rack with all this ubiquity gear. But before all that, I wanna show you guys all of the gear we chose and why we chose it. We're gonna rack it up. Let's do a network build thing. As for all the gear, we opted to use exclusively Unify hardware for the core network for the entire deployment. It made sense because it's really easy to manage it this way. Choosing the correct router for a deployment like this is super important. And while there are other Unify options, I opted for the Dream Machine SE. The main reason is PoE or power over ethernet. Even though we have other switches that can do PoE, as you'll find out later, the PoE on the Dream Machine SE is very useful and it's the only dream machine that Unify makes with PoE. For regular ethernet switching, I chose two switches. I went with the USW16 PoE and the USW24 PoE. For this network, we don't need anything faster than one gigabit connections for any devices outside of the rack. Using two different size switches was down to product availability at the time that I had to build the rack and the whole network. Because this is a location that requires lots of cameras, I decided that instead of doing a cloud-based IP camera solution that I'd set up an on-premises solution. So I went with the Unify NVR Pro. It's got seven drive bays and it easily integrates with the rest of the network services. I put in seven four terabyte Seagate Ironwolf NAS drives and I had those on hand. With the configuration for this setup, we can get about 770 days of recording time with 10 cameras at 1440p. The core network switch is something that I've got a lot of experience with because this is a switch that we use on our own core network. It's the USW 10 gigabit eight port aggregation switch. For networks of this size, it's perfect. It's not too expensive and it allows all of your equipment to communicate with either direct attached copper or fiber. It's good to have a switch like this for when the network eventually gets scaled up and it also now has a 10 gig core. Speaking of, before I deploy any networks, I always build the core network on the bench and configure almost everything. For this network, I picked up a bunch of QSFP Tech DAC cables and I connected them all up to start this configuration. Let me show you the basics of how I configured this whole setup before deploying it. There is always going to be a few changes along the way, but this will give you an idea of how it was done. The UDM SE is the Unify console and all devices are adopted into the network starting off with the UDM SE. The reason why I like Unify for deployments like this is it's easy to get a visual representation of what's happening at a glance. This will help whoever comes in and manages the network and the IT after I finish this deployment. In fact, even if you're not a verse network engineer, Unify is very easy to manage. One of the most important parts of this deployment is Wi-Fi. The cool thing about Unify is that you can set up all of the Wi-Fi networks without having a single access point connected. I set up four networks here, 
a guest network for people visiting and for hanging out in the customer area. This network cannot see any other devices on the network. A Wi-Fi network for office devices that can see servers, printers, and all the telephony. A staff Wi-Fi network for employees that cannot see anything except for the internet with full layer seven filtering and an IOT network or smart lights and devices like TVs and that kind of stuff. The VLAN configuration is a little bit more complicated. I set up a VLAN for the cameras and the security system and the alarms can see the cameras and all of them can all be seen by the NVR Pro. On top of all of that, the switches have tag ports to only allow certain traffic to certain VLANs, but I'll dive into a bit more of this a bit later because this is just the general gist of the configuration. Obviously, I'm not going to show you how everything is configured, but if this is something that you're looking at doing yourself, this will help you get a grasp of how to do something similar. This whole core network, again, is set up outside of where it's being deployed. And as I mentioned, there were changes made later. About two weeks after doing the initial staging for this deployment, we acquired a full depth 42RU rack. I started racking all the gear up and getting an idea of where I wanted things to be in the rack and where I wanted the patch panels to be. This rack was filled with cage nuts when we first picked it up and I replaced everything in this rack with rack studs. I found these new duo rack studs on Amazon for one RU devices, and these were an absolute game changer. I'll link to those down below if you're interested. They come in from the backside rather than the front side like regular rack studs, and they made aligning all of the gear really easy. The rack came with a bunch of these cable management bits, but I've always kind of not liked these because they get really brittle and they break easily. And because these have been used on another site before, then yeah, you, you get the idea that they break pretty easily. As you'll see later, I replaced all of these with our good old friends, some brush panels. Yeah, I think this looks pretty good for now, but we still need to add a whole bunch more network gear. We've got another switch and we've got an NVR to go in as well. All ubiquity stuff. Really, really cool stuff. This is the stuff that we use on our own network. Now, one of the other things is we're gonna add some servers into this rack later. I tagged every port with VLANs. It's, so basically every port has a purpose. It knows what it's gonna do, but to bring the network up, it has to be done in order because I can't remember what I tagged it as, but there is a really clever way we can do this. First of all, when the network comes up and I plug in this direct attached copper cable to the router, What's going to happen is I know what port seven does and port seven is designed to only work and interface with this in the network. So that one is good because I have the memory of a goldfish. I can't remember exactly what I tagged everything as. So what I'd recommend doing as kind of like a workaround, if you can't remember what everything is, if you're doing a bigger deployment like this is racking all of your gear up and then just plugging in just so they're there. And then when you bring the network up, you just plug them into their corresponding port. So from there on, I can power up th these two devices and then I can log in and see what these are and then power up and well, not, I don't even need to power them up, but I can then connect them in the correct order because what's happened next is the NVR has its own VLAN for all the cameras because with Unify, what happens is the Unify controller or the Unify Protect controller is not going to see any of your cameras. So what we've done is I've created a whole subnet and a whole network and VLAN just for security cameras, which is the best way to do it. And because the Unify, well, the NVR Pro is a Unify device, but it runs as a Unify controller, it changes the way that it interacts with the network. All the access points we're using are the Unify U6 Pros. We've got seven of them for the whole deployment and we've done a bit of a Wi-Fi survey beforehand. So it should be more than enough to cover this massive, it's about a thousand square meters, but it should be okay. Each of these will do about 150 square meters. Now you're thinking, oh, seven times 150, you know, anyway. You guys get the idea with the math. We, we good here. So what I would recommend doing when you're doing a big deployment like this, and I know this is not like our normal content, but you need to adopt all of these first and before mounting them in places that you might not be able to get access to again, you wanna make sure that these are actually on the network. So we're gonna adopt all of them. We'll basically bench test everything before we deploy. 
like I said, the reason why is we want to make sure these work. And if there's a problem later, which there shouldn't be, cross our fingers, then we'll know what the culprit is. Maybe you'll find this interesting, maybe you won't. I'm gonna let this one dangle off the rack. <laughs> the cable's not quite long enough, but we should be okay. <laughs> Look how many access points we've got. We've got like so many. <laughs> Get these ones in on the floor. PoE is a, is a great thing. I've always really loved the PoE. They just power up. Ah! Okay. The world's most awkward guy to film. The other reason why I wanted to test these now before we deploy the whole setup is we need to know what the power budget is like for this PoE switch. Will seven access points overwhelm the switch? Because if it does, then we need to come up with a different solution. We have way more PoE on different bits of hardware, so we should be okay. But the idea is to use one switch for all access points, one switch for all the cameras, and then we have some spare PoE that we can assign different VLANs and networks to just in case we go over our power budget, right? Very important stuff when it comes to PoE. After plugging in all the access points into the USW16 PoE, I quickly realized that we were way over the power budget of 42 watts on this switch. I knew this was most likely going to happen, but I wanted to verify. It's always good to test and verify before deploying anything. This is the reason why I opted for the UDM SE in the first place. It has a much higher PoE budget of 180 watts. Because I knew that I was deploying eight access points in total, I knew that from the get go, that the UDM SE was going to be more than capable. Now, I wanna show you guys how we get this all adopted in one go, and making sure it all works. Be aware though, this Wi-Fi setup right here is not an ideal solution. These need to be way further apart for them to be effective. <laughs> When you have multiple unified devices in a console that haven't been connected before, you can bulk adopt them before labeling or tagging them in the console. You can click adopt all and it will bring all of the access points online. When I was doing this, we didn't have internet on premises at all. So I couldn't update the firmware here, but you get the idea. You can now see that with all of the access points connected and adopted, that we're using about 54 watts of power on the UDM SE. This is not including the AP that I installed inside of the rack for management. For cameras are going with the Unify G5 bullets. We've got a lot of these going around the place and like the access points before deploying anything, especially when cameras are definitely gonna be in a place you can't reach. We wanna make sure they're all connected properly. The way this is set up is a little bit different to the way the access points work. The access points connect to the network directly and they dish out IP addresses on all the networks that are connected to each network with the wireless access points because there's a couple of Wi-Fi networks. But the way this works is this switch here has 10 ports assigned to a separate VLAN that the NVR Pro can see because I think I mentioned this earlier in the video, mind you, we're filming this over multiple days. If this camera is on a different VLAN to the NVR, it's not gonna see it. So yeah, that's just like a little bit of a tip with Unify stuff. It is a little bit of a quirk, but it makes sense because then you can do some network segmentation. So let's power all of these up with PoE. Adopting cameras is a little bit different. You'll need to switch over to the console interface for the NVR, which can be accessed by either using the site manager in Unify or a simple dropdown on the left-hand side. You'll have to adopt all of the cameras one by one, but it's as easy as clicking on them one by one, and it just takes a few seconds to take effect. I would absolutely do this before deploying any cameras on any site. The reason is once they come online, you can quickly view the cameras without having to adopt them, and it makes it easier for then you having your phone. Let's say you had Unify Protect on your phone, you can go and adjust the cameras without having to muck around too much. But that's not the only thing that we're gonna be using on this network because Unify now supports third-party cameras. This is a camera I've been testing. It's a little T-peeling camera, about 50 Australian dollars in the US. Oh, I don't know what's going on with T-peeling in the US, but probably about 30 US dollars or so, but these also work. 
And it's also PUE. What can you see a reflection yeah, in it? I was trying to wave to oh, that's really cool. Unify Protect now has the ability to adopt third party on VIF cameras. As you can see, this TP Link camera comes up as a new Unify device in Unify Protect. Adopting is slightly different here. You'll need the username and password that is set for any on VIF device for the camera. This is usually easy to set up on the camera itself by the web UI on the camera. Usually you just go to the IP address and set that up. Once you've put in the username and password, it'll behave as any other Unify camera other than having the advanced AI and subject detection features that Unify cameras have. This is only a limitation of the OnVIF cameras for now. I, I think they're gonna work on this in the future. Cameras like Google Nest cameras or Cisco Meraki cameras will not work with Unify. In fact, Mark, the guy who wired up the entire building, had some random IP cameras in his car and we installed those because we couldn't get the Cisco Meraki cameras working with Unify Protect and those ones worked out of the box, which I thought was really cool. There's not much other PoE going in other than a bunch of these little five port Unify Flex mini switches that I've used many times. And these can be powered over PoE. They don't need USB-C, so yeah. Very, very cool. We've got these all over our house, actually. Claire doesn't even know, but all of our like weird gigabit stuff is all powered by this over PoE. This deployment isn't finished yet. There's quite a bit more to do, but I'm gonna take you guys for the rest of that journey very, very soon. So far, this deployment has been really smooth. This is why when Adam asked me what we should do, I recommended that we use the Unify because it's just easy to manage for anyone. Even little things like seeing the cameras on the tiny little screen on front of the UNVR Pro is really cool. I like how Unify hardware does stuff like that. It's completely pointless, but also kind of useful. I thought I'd show you something pretty cool. This is a 600 times speed time lapse of the epoxy being applied to the floor over three hours using the built-in time lapse feature in Unify Protect. You'll also see me switching the camera from SDR to HDR midway through this. I, I love doing this stuff. It's just so satisfying to watch. The the rack is almost done here too. As you can see, I've color coded all of the different devices to make it easier for anyone who comes along to know what everything is. You can also view all the tags for everything in Unify as well. But this shot here is a bit messy because we pulled all the patch panels out because we started patching all the stuff in. But this is what it usually looks like. That's gonna do for this part. In the next part, I'm gonna show you where we put all the access points, how we get all the cameras to work, how to identify what all of it is after you've installed it, and how to do a little bit of upkeep and maintenance of a network of this size. But yeah, I'll catch you guys next time. This was fun.